Hello, just now we are struck by lightning and it killed my monitor and the Ethernet too. So I was saying it killed my Ethernet port of the laptop. But it seems like the laptop still, still works, only the Ethernet port is gone. And that too happened because of my router. See, this thing died along with my Ethernet port. And it killed my monitor too. What? I had search production, I believe, in my power stream. What the was that doing there? See, it has a whole level of search protection and protection in general. But where the f are three more LEDs? Only one? Oh, I know. I have to shoot the other day. Wanna see how dark it was that day? See, this was the setting I was using in the camera that day. Now anyway, I was saying, you see there are specific LEDs to show the status of the thing and you, can, and you can see there is only one LED left in there. So I remember what happened. So one day when I was uh, having my dinner, the whole thing just exploded. So later when I opened this thing up, I found this circuit. See? So that time I didn't know what this thing does. So I just swapped it out and instead I just fit to perform as an extension board. And I can still find that video on my channel I'm all scared where I was blowing up that LED. For the first time when I create something. Now why did I swap that thing out you may ask? So right after the fuse blown up I replaced with another fuse and when I powered that thing up, it again blew up in my face. That's why I thought the circuit is a piece of junk. I just threw it out, but I've been an idiot. Because apparently what this thing does is search protection. And how it is done you may ask? So as you can see there is a pretty big component right here. This is the main component which protects against surges. These things are called MOVs or metal oxide varistors. Now what is a varistor? Well, it is a variable resistor. That's where the name came from. But wait, that is not a variable resistor like we see potentiometers. See, varistors are non-linear devices. So when the voltage levels are normal like in our case it's like 250 volts, 240 volts, 230 volts or something like that then this thing will act as open circuit but when suppose the voltage levels are above a rated value I don't know what this thing have rated value though all of these MOVs have a threshold value and when voltage levels go above the threshold value this thing acts as short circuits so that means that voltage doesn't go into your components rather this thing acts as you can say fuses which will only act on high voltages only when the voltage is high this thing will act as short circuits and blow away your fuse and if there is no fuse apparently these will destroy themselves just to protect yourself i mean your components which are plugged in in your board How long is it? It's over. And yesterday I was lacking this circuit, so I didn't have any search protection feature in this board. And that's why it blew up my router with my Ethernet port and also my monitor as well. And also I did a terrible mistake. I put a slow fuse in it. You know what slow fuses are? Do you see that? 
Inside the capsule, you can see a thick strand of metal. This is how thick the metal is. So when suppose over current passes through it, the metal strand melts slowly. That's why this is called slow fuse. And there is there are other kind of fuses which have one strand of wear. That means a string of wear, a single strand. So those melts pretty quickly. That's why the, those are called fast fuse. These power strips should have fast fuse. But probably when changing the fuse, I didn't see. And instead fitted this one. It will let your components die and then it will die. Now I feel how moron I am. I have to replace the circuit. Well, the circuits I see here are kind of simple, so probably I can make them without any issues. I don't know why they are using the two inductors though, but I was uh, just thinking that if I can put one varistor parallel to my plug point, then it should work as well. But why are these inductors here? I don't know. So see, this is what I'm talking about. It uses three MOVs and shows how to connect them. No fancy inductors or other components. I still don't know how well this will work though. But I guess something is better than nothing. But in theory, this should work as well. I just need a fuse, a proper fuse, not a slow fuse. What the f is this? This thing fitted a screw inside it. What the f See, this is an example of slow fuse, this one, I mean fast fuse, this one, it only has a strand of wear. So it, it will melt quickly. I have to find a fuse like this. Now I have to find some MOVs. I guess I had some MOVs laying around. I have to find them now. Oh, piece of shit. This still have charges in there. What? For the next hour or so, this moron kept on searching for MOVs. At the end, he found two MOVs, but later discovered those are rated for max 95 volts. Years after he screwed up his whole schedule. GE means General Electric. That's the brand. Don't know about the 14. But there at the bottom you can see V095. That means this has a threshold or cutoff or whatever you call, want to call it. 95 volts. That means above 95 volts it will act as short circuit. Pretty much useless for this job. But then you can see the blown away circuit, it has V275, that means it's had a voltage of 275 volts. That means anything above 275 volts will act as short circuit. So for now, I'll just cut this and salvage and shoulder between the phase and neutral. That'll do a protection against surges. And as soon as it becomes a short circuit, the fuse will blow away. And also I have to replace the slow fuse with a fast fuse. So that the MOV doesn't burn away before the fuse. I'm still thinking how much of a moon I was. Who installs a slow fuse in a power strip where the safety is the first priority? Where should I put this MOV? Should be in the input side, I guess. Or does it even matter if I just put it right here? 
it will just act as short circuit so the current will go nowhere except in it obviously ow f ow it becomes hot so quickly there is no easy way to desolder it There you go. Wow. That literally took 10 years. Ow. Still hot. Ow. The legs of my MOVs are quite short. That's why I have to cut a bridge in this phase wire which will which is directly coming from the switch is this a good design probably not but I have to do it because i don't have another mov and the legs are cut cut short short in this so probably i will protect it using some electrical tape or maybe even some hot glue this should be pretty good do not make contact with any of those otherwise this Cutting a bridge is kind of dangerous and I shouldn't do this very often. But for now, seems like you're stuck with this. You have to just screw one terminal in there. And the other terminal will get shouldered with the bridge on the wire. Still looks pretty neat to me. Still you shouldn't cut slots, I mean bridges to your wires. Because any loose wire can make contact with this and blow away, you know? There is no loose wires in here. I also have like short legs for this MOV. So we are screwed. Have to do it like this. But this is not a very good practice. You know what I'm saying? I dressed some of the terminals. Those are exposed. And now it's ready to be powered on. It still scares me a lot. Now I have to power this thing. Let's do it. It shouldn't blow up. You know, high voltage scares me. So let's turn it on. 3, 2, 1. There you go. Nothing happened. What? Oh, I forgot to turn it on. 3, 2, 1. Ow. 3, 2, 1. Oh my god. Let's measure the voltage now. 168 volts? There you go. That was a... That was a loose connection. There you go. 240 volts. So everything working as expected. So this is a plus. We are done. But there is no way I can test the surge protection feature. So for now, we'll just believe something is better than nothing. Right? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it.